We and the opposition will judge the government's legislative programme against three tests. Will it deliver a more equal society? An economy that works for everyone and a society in which there is opportunity for all. Sadly, it appears that many of the proposals in the Queen's speech militate against those aims, as have the proposals in previous years. Still, this government does not seem to understand that cuts have their consequences. When you cut adult social care, it has an impact on National Health Service accident emergency departments. When you saddle young people with more debt, you impede their ability to buy a home or start a family. When you fail to build housing and cap housing benefit, then homelessness and the number of families in temporary accommodation increases. When you slash the budgets of local authorities, then leisure centres close, libraries close, children's centres close. When you close fire stations and cut firefighters' jobs, then response times increase and more people are in danger of dying in fires. This austerity is a political choice, not an economic necessity. And it's a wrong choice for our country and made by a government with the wrong priorities. And it's women that have been hit hardest by these cuts. Over 80% of cuts fall disproportionately on women. And as the Women's Budget point Group has pointed out, all these cuts mean that the opportunities for women are systematically reduced and diminished within our society. This government is failing to deliver an economy that meets the needs and aspirations of the people that sent us here. A government that is consistently failing to meet its own economic targets. They failed on the deficit, failed on the debt, failed on productivity, failed to rebalance the economy. Much could be said in a similar vein on housing. The government claims to aspire to build a, nil, a million new homes. The reality, however, is that house building has sunk to its lowest level since the 1920s. And so out of touch are the benches opposite. They think £450,000 is what people can afford for a starter home. Mr Speaker, this government is failing to deliver even on its own proposals, though often that is for the better. The Prime Minister said two weeks ago, we're going to have academies for all, and it will be in the Queen's speech. But just a fortnight later, there is no sign of it. Parents, governors, pupils, teachers and head teachers will be relieved to get final confirmation today that the wrong-headed proposals, the wrong-headed proposals to impose forced academisation have finally been dumped. They've been forced to back down, Mr Speaker, on a number of issues in recent months. On tax credits, on the Saudi prison deal, on police cuts, on cuts to personal independence payments for disabled people, on the solar tax, on the tampon tax, on freedom of information, on Sunday training and on aspects of the trade union bill and the housing bill. To call it disarray would be generous, but that's without discussing the resultant black hole in the government's finances. But perhaps, but perhaps, Mr Speaker, most worrying proposal of all is the decision to try to seek to redefine poverty and deprivation. Apparently, it's all about instability, addiction and debt. All things you can blame on individuals about which governments like to moralise. Well, no. Well, no, Mr Speaker. It's about one million people in our country using food banks, yeah. about record levels of in-work poverty. Yeah. The fact that absolute child poverty after housing costs is up by half a million. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That poverty is up in disabled households yeah. on the same basis. That homelessness has gone up every year since the Prime Minister took office. And at last Christmas, Mr Speaker, 100,000 children spent that festival in temporary insecure accommodation. And the causes of this, cuts to welfare benefits, cuts to ESA, the bedroom tax, the benefit cap, wages being too low and jobs insecure and housing whether to rent or buy 
been too expensive. Mr Speaker, you don't tackle poverty by moving the goalposts. Poverty and inequality are collective failures of our society as a whole, not individual ones. We know on this side of the House that decent public services are necessary for a good society, but that they depend on tax revenues. People expect companies that trade in this country and people who live in this country to pay their tax in this country. It funds our public services. Aggressive tax avoidance and tax evasion are an attack on our NHS, on our schools, on care for the elderly and disabled people, on social security and prevent poverty, homelessness and destitution. Mr Speaker, if anyone wants to deliver a more equal society, an economy that works for everyone and a society where there is opportunity for all, it takes an active government to do it, not the driverless car heading in the wrong direction that we have in this government at the present time.